Welcome to Psychology at Work. I'm Dr. Paul Brewerton, otherwise known as the Strengths Guy. As a doctor of psychology and the founder and chair of Strengthscope, I'm here to share my insights with you. Tune in for a regular dose of positive, strengths based content. My podcasts are packed full of tips and tools designed to enhance your world of work. Ready to dive into the good stuff in this episode? Then let's go. Hey, my name is Dr. Paul Brewerton, the Strengths Guy. I am a chartered occupational psychologist. Doctor of Organizational Psychology and Founder and Chair of Strengthscope. And today I'm really grateful, actually, to have with me uh, on the podcast a man whose perspective is going to make you feel curious, intrigued, joyful, which he's proving by having the word joy behind him with a Christmas wreath right in the middle, just in case you needed that kind of timestamp. Um, and quite frankly, closer to feeling fully human. It is Kent Frazier, founder of Fully Human, the warmest and most wholehearted of welcomes, Kent. Thank you so much, Paul. And I will volley back a very open-hearted and warm, thank you for having me. Awesome, amazing. Right, I wanna, I wanna talk a little bit about Fully Human just before we kind of kick off. You, I, I want you to talk about the business and the program more, right, as we go through. Um, but this is what your website says. Fully human is an interdis. This is, I've counted, there are 15 syllables in the coming three words. <laughs> it's an interdisciplinary collective of practitioners, which has a lyrical element to it that I absolutely love, right? Um, you, you guys are dedicated to serving the well being and the evolution of the human condition with a focus on the part of our lives where we spend the majority of our waking hours and our attention and our energy. And that's the workplace. So, do you like, do you buy that? Like that's on the website? <laughs> do you agree? I, I wrote that. That, or yeah. that came through me as I was trying to describe who we are, how we orient. Like what's the map we're, we're holding? Like where, where are we getting organized around? And it's, yeah. it's those things. I love it. I love it. I want to hear more about it. We're going to talk about, about the company. Well, I say the company, the collective, right? Let's use this, yeah. the, right? Um, now, I want to describe you to you as you've described yourself on your LinkedIn page as well, right? With these different pillars that define you, which I just think are fact, they're just magnificent. Um, so you, according to LinkedIn, are a catalyst of transformation. You're curious and creative and collaborative. You're an entrepreneur, a solo dad. Yes, the solo dad. Mm -hmm. An executive coach. Yeah. A mentor, a speaker, a musician, and last, but most certainly not least, an Iron Man. I mean, full blown mic drop, right? <laughs> it really is, because it's an amazing CV of just a few, like, just words, but mm. they they just conjure so much. Um, and I, yeah, I just I, so I really am excited about this conversation, and I want to hear about um, how you've arrived where you are today. You know, like, I think that's a, a really important part of the conversation. So a little bit about your journey from then to now. But given how I experienced you as like a silver surfer type character, I don't know if you resonate with the surfer. I don't even know. Go ahead. Keep going. You no, you don't. Are you okay? You've got to go. You've like got like silver surfer. The silver surfer as in the comic book character. Okay, go check it out. I don't know the silver oh, surfer. He's this amazing character, right? He just like, he surfs on a surfboard around the universe, philosophizing. Like he's uh -huh. literally <laughs> off world most of the time, wondering about the human condition, and then mm. occasionally kind of coming to earth and bringing wisdom with him, you know, where where he's, oh, you've got to go check him out. Check oh, out- I totally will. That, that, feels, that feels eerily accurate. <laughs> right, and and also he's bald. I mean, like there, <laughs> I mean, seriously. So from a relatively young age, for me, I was like, okay, not only did I just like resonate with you anyway, surfer, but now even more so, apart mm. from not being fully silver, which he is. Um, mm. So I also wanted to say, given that, but you know, like maybe we don't go so far on the silver surfer stuff because you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but I like this kind of curious, searching, philosophical sense of, of who that is, not just your journey from then to now, but also from there to here. Mm. Okay. Um, the other thing is as well as like, you know, kind of giving the vibe that you're like off world some of the time, I, I actually, I actually experience you as like a super grounded human, you know, like someone who's very practical in their thinking, 
um, focused on improving working life for people, right? So I want to talk about Fully Human. I want to talk about that as a program and how, um, you know, you've designed a program to deliver an improvement in people's working lives and strengths. So how strengths fits into that, um, you know, how you've brought strengths into your client work, into the program as well. And gen more generally, like the kinds of experiences that you've had with strengths and with Scope, which is our collective tool of choice, um, mm -hmm. you know, for exploring the world of human energy, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it'd be lovely as well if we get to, to talk about a more meta level, how our businesses have worked together, you know, like how we've collaborated and combined forces um, with strengths, maybe as an engine for leadership uh, and personal development stuff, right? How it can be, got to be a better analogy, right? But the intel inside, um, you know, sort of powered by strengths, if you like. Mm -hmm. So that'd be cool. But I, I want to start with you. I want to start with your journey from um, from then to now, from there to here, um, wherever you want to pick it up from, right? Could be day one, could be like your very first steps, which wouldn't mm -hmm. have been on day one. They might have been <laughs> on day one, um, but or wherever you want to pick it up. But like right up to now, what's brought you to here? Um, and, you know, how are you evolving humankind? How are you shifting the world? Um, would be a great place to finish. So uh, over to you. Oh, beautiful, Paul. Thank you so much. I, wow. That was, I think, the most thorough introduction and uh, I, I've received. So thank you. What, what, You're what a welcome. Beautiful, I appreciate the reflection, really. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I will check out the Silver Surfer um, as you were speaking to that metaphor I felt my body open. I felt myself relax. I was like, oh, okay. Like that feels, yeah, it feels good. Felt felt like it fit. So I good. thank you for your uh, reflection in a way that I wasn't familiar with, but it's something that you saw that really yeah, um, impacted you, I guess. Right. Is and ever, you, you know, like I love your curiosity. I share it. You know, I know you're going to go away and check it out. Um, I'm going oh, to, sure. like, I'm going to go right back as I've got some of those old comic books and I just want to dig them out and just check that that is a correct resonance. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm, but I'm to like, I'm totally convinced, like rather than it be a teenage <laughs> version of that. <laughs> so cool. Well, so, um, I I'm in a, I'm in a master class right now around how do we build narrative intelligence? with a, a guy named Michael Margolis. He has this organization called Storied. And yeah. he's what he's helping me and others with is how do we tell our story? Yeah, yeah. How, what's the narrative of my life? And and how can, what's, it's my creative responsibility to tell that story in an honoring way. Yeah. And that gives people some sense of, oh, here's who he is, here's where he's going without yeah. coming across like a jerk yeah. or a know-it-all or a, you know, yeah. blowhard or, or whatever the case yeah, might yeah. be. That's right? super so, cool. So you're like, you're in, you're doing this as a course of study. I'm, or do, a course I'm of doing reflection. this as a course of study oh. for, for myself. How does it tie to, so, you know, so I'll get into how does that tie to all the work I'm doing, but yeah. one of the, why I'm starting with that grounding is he, he's teaching us, if you're going to introduce yourself, first tell people what you're up to and the love story about the future you're committed to creating, and then go back and connect the dots. Because if you just start, well, I was born in Quakertown, Pennsylvania, people are like, I don't have any context to land, like, yeah. where's this going? Yeah. So if you don't mind, like Brilliant. as, as you were introducing me, it's like, oh, how, how do I want to speak into this love story yeah. of the future yeah. that I'm most committed to create with, yeah. with, with you, with, with other people that I collaborate. Yeah. And, and so for me, that that's just one of like, that's a, a, a future where we have new systems of human cooperation mm -hmm. Where we're not we're not committing ecological offense to anyone or mm -hmm. anything, mm -hmm. and we you know our our shared game is to steward the preciousness of life. Yeah. Yeah. Because right, so that's what I'm committed to. How do we? And this is where it drops back into the work. What is fully human? Well, we we view this as an evolutionary imperative. We're viewing it through a developmental lens. Mm -hmm. Who do we need to become so that we don't self extinguish yeah 
Because if you look at the data right now, you look at the climate impacts, you look at the social, political, economic landscape, you know, mm -hmm. you just look at, you pick your data set. Yeah. Our collective way of being as a species is debasing the very substrate that we depend upon to exist. Yeah. So how can I hold that without being raging against the machine and being a jerk and, and you know, being a promoter of violence against that? Yeah. It's like, I have to learn to love it. Okay, we got here. Great. Thank you. We're, we, we got here. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Look how far we've gotten. And we have to come to terms with mm. what's not serving us anymore. Right. And how do we create? What's that new path of possibilities? Yeah. Yeah. Who do we need to become? And what's that path of possibility? Because right now, the path that we're on is a very limiting path. Mm hmm when, when you extrapolate the data and, you know, 70% of life has been gone extinct in the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's a pattern. Mm -hmm. so, so, right. That that's where, I, that's what I'm committed to doing. And how do we, with tools like strength scope and, and being very um, practical, pragmatic, honest mm -hmm. and integrity of caring for the whole. Mm -hmm. Being stewards of life. Mm -hmm. that That's what I'm up to. Yeah. So, so I'll pause there and just see if you... And, and I love... I I, you, it's incredible. Tell the story, but what do you want? Like, what do you... What, yeah. So uh, there's a whole... Bunch, like, I have all the questions you're going to answer, right? Because the questions are, how did you get to that place? Um, you know, what are the experiences that you have had which have brought you to that, you know, that that macro meta level of we need to look after the whole here. We, we can't be focused on us as one individual we have to be looking after all of us right or we're not actually doing service to any of us so those are those kind of that's partly where I was going or like where you were taking me but I was also feeling like what does that look like right if I because it can look like so many ways you know like it, it, you you could that's such a massive it is set of considerations to kind of be looking at and saying, right, I want to go in that direction when that direction is that, 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 and all of the directions because we've got to look at the whole thing. So I'm kind yeah. of, I don't know, maybe, maybe we go to the second of those sort of questions that I just asked or posed first, because mm. that's, that's your direction of travel. So have you formulated um, collaborations already? Like are you, are there particular kind of organizations that you're feeling particularly aligned with that you're thinking like you know you guys are doing or are going to be doing great work in the world and i want to be part of that for sure yes so um one in particular that's that's come onto my radar in the last year really is um this organization called inner development goals mm -hmm. um it, many listeners i suspect and you're familiar with the it, the ESG, the the environmental right. sustainability goals yep. that that we've created as as the UN, seventeen very specifically described external things that we need to be responsible for mm -hmm. if we want to create a, a viable future on for life to exist on the planet. Yeah. You know, it's not a trivial thing. Yeah, a and yet, um, you know, the big the big global cop just 28 right just finished in is that what the number is cop 28 I yeah like, i think right? so. it just finished it just finished right and it's like oh okay um we we have all these goals we know what we need to do well what's what's preventing us from actually right hitting all these targets out yeah. here that we say we yeah. we are committed to hmm. well inner development goals says and this is where it aligns with our um perspective at fully human which mm -hmm. through a developmental lens like who do we need to become mm -hmm. it, in our interior in our meaning making mm -hmm. in the maps that we're holding in the choices that we're making mm -hmm. you know so we can borrow from some indigenous peoples mm -hmm. um here here in the in the u.s mm -hmm. you know there, there are some tribes that said you know we are stewards seven seven generations into the future mm -hmm. we make choices and decisions today mm -hmm on behalf of the next seven generations, Incredible. not on behalf of next quarter's earnings. Right, right. And actually on that, this whole notion that, you know, we got to save the planet, everybody, because it's not about us. It's about our children and our children's children. But then to far forward play that to seven generations time 
seems to be the way because then you have some sense of the reality of what it will look like in 200 years, in 250 years, right? If we keep going on the same path, not in, and it's bad enough in 20, 30, 40, if we follow the projections through, right? So yeah, long-term, let's go long-term here because we have to. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that, so that, that wisdom that existed before modernity. <laughs> yeah. Before we started chasing whatever we're chasing, you know, mostly it's a, it's a profit orientation. It's like, yep. you know, we're trying to asymmetrically aggregate this one thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that creates tensions in all the other things. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So we, we've, in our pursuit of progress, we've, we've, kind of excluded this idea of being stewards yeah and and so to heal you know one of our invitations is well how do we reintegrate that idea that our forefathers sisters mothers that right like mm -hmm. they knew that they brought that light to mm -hmm. us w what are we doing with the gift of life yeah this is the question that, that we're holding. And, yeah. and so one of my teachers, Richard Barrett from the Barrett value systems, again, puts beautiful language to this idea of holding oneself as stewards. And, and it fits into our developmental view as well. He, he says there only exists self-interest. Mm -hmm. What changes is our definition of self. Mm. Self is no longer Kent going through the world trying to collect trophies for Kent. Mm. Kent might have a way of developing himself such that he can demonstrate his ability to build relationships, organize people, um, get tasks going in order to achieve outcomes, mm. right? Because we all mm. need to do this. But on behalf of what? What's the motivation? Mm -hmm. Is it for me to look good? You know, is me climbing the mountain so that everyone can see, can mm. see me? Or is me climbing the mountain so I can get a better view of how to take care of things? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so with th this, this movement, this collective that we've been stirring for the last um, five years in this, four years in this, four and a half, five years in this particular expression of fully human comes from my own suicidal depression. Right. Right. Looking at all the things that I felt like I needed to do to be enough to survive, to win, to play the game, mm -hmm. to get rewarded, to feel good, to, to be to feel like I belong. Right. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. I keep doing all these things, thinking that they're going to make me feel good about myself mm -hmm. or, or what? Oh, and, and they never do. Yeah. It's just on to the next thing, this hedonic adaptation. Yeah. I need a faster car. I need a younger wife. I need yeah. a bigger house. Yeah. I need a, another house. I, I need to fly first class. Oh, no, no, no. I need my own plane. It's like, how, wh where is it? Like, where does that, that yeah. stop? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that, by the way. That's a, that's a significant thing to share. So I really well, appreciate it, that. I, thank you for honoring and pause. I mean, it's, it's, it's a the mental health crisis. Like this mm -hmm. is another one of the things, right? It's like that that system. Um, Thomas Merton, a, 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 a monk back in the day, right? He mm -hmm. he spoke to the voice of the anonymous collectivity speaking through your mouth. It's like notice sometimes as you're reaching for something, who is it that's reaching? Mm -hmm. What were you conditioned to reach for and want for mm -hmm. to get mm -hmm. thinking that it's going to be, oh, this, if I just get this thing, then it's going to be, ah, oh, then I'll, oh, I'm no different. I, I have this thing now, but I'm no different. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so I hear where you're going yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and now how, what happened? I mean, you've already talked about like one of the significant things in your life from a mental health perspective right one of the most significant components 
what else? Like, what are the other, like, how, how did you come to the conclusion, right? That you need to, it's not almost any question that I ask. It's like, it's obvious, right? But I'd like to hear your version of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, to come to a conclusion that you need to work with others in order to do more for the whole, right? And to kind of create that sense of a direction and then a program and that in itself be very experienceable, you know, like this is me in whatever, you tell us about the program, right? Tell us about Fully Human. You know, yeah. what does that feel like as a delegate, as a participant, yeah, as somebody who's, that would be really helpful. Yeah, well, so it's, um, the way we hold it. So as I was in, let me try to connect the dots here. As I was in, in that deep depressive moment in that to be or not to be question. Mm -hmm. I remembered this teaching from Jiju Krishnamurthy, who was an Indian sage who once upon a time said, it is no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. And as I remembered that, I took a breath that I hadn't taken in a while. And the next thing I heard was, so Kent, what if you're not sick? Mm. You know, as I look at the climate data, the wars, the, you know, econ economic, just look at the landscape of how we're collectively expressing in the world. If you're, mm. if one is well adjusted to that, mm. is that a measure of health is the question. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. great question. Right. right. So, and then if I am so disturbed by this and my own complicit participation in it as a way of being my whole life, mm -hmm. and I have to come to terms with taking, re oh gosh, I've been doing just like me, like I've been doing this. That's maybe why I feel so bad. Mm -hmm. But what if I'm not sick? Because that that's not mm -hmm. a healthy way of being. Mm -hmm. So in that, in that way, I was like, okay, so what do I want to build? What do I want to create? And this is a, this is a big shift from depression to yeah. creation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. From a path of limitations to yeah. a path of possibilities. Yeah. I was at depression. Another way to talk about depression is being in a deep victim perspective Right. for me. You know, the whole world is happening to me. I'm at the effect of everyone and everything, and I can't do anything. Man. Yeah. Like in a in a in overdrive, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah. It's like getting on that path of possibilities, what I used was my 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 wheel. Like 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 where do I get life? So I'm gonna pull in strength scope if I yeah, can. Please, yeah, absolutely. Right. It's like relationships. Okay, I've got lots of trusting relationships. Let me just start calling people because I'm not sick now, right? It was that change in perspective. Yeah. From I'm depressed and I don't know if I want to be here to like, wait a second, this is a healthy immune response to a patho pathological construct. I'm not sick. Oh, this is cool. Now I've got energy. Who can I start to call? Yeah. And talk about, ask questions. Yeah. Be curious. What can I learn? It's my yeah. self-improvement, right? So I'm in relationship building. Yeah. Self -improvement. Hey, start talking to me about the lasting contribution we made to other people. Oh, developing others. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, how did we serve? So I started calling people back through my career mm -hmm. and started hearing all this feedback mm -hmm. until one woman, Abigail Boudreaux, who's another strength scope practitioner, mm -hmm. she says to me, oh, Kent, it, it, you taught us it was perfectly okay to be fully human at work. Oh, and I started weeping. Mm -hmm. I relaxed. And I said, okay. Well, if if it's if we want people to understand what it means to be more fully human, mm. what inquiry, what contemplative mm. progression might we be, bring people through? Because I don't know what Paul wants or needs or who Paul wants to become. That would be arrogant of me to say, "Come to my program, and Paul, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you." <laughs> who, who, right? No. Yeah. yeah. I can create a container. Yeah a safe container and a context and invite you into a deep inquiry about who you are. Yeah. And so I said, what technology do I want to deploy to, yeah. to hold people in this inquiry? Yeah. I said, I want to use technology that's been around for thousands of years. It's the Buddhist eightfold path. Wow. 
it acts it asks a series of questions okay right. how do i see this yeah such that i think how if, if i see it this way how am i thinking about it mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. i'm thinking about it that way then how am i going to talk about it mm -hmm. if i'm talking about it that way then how am i going to take action mm -hmm. How does all that stuff lead to my job, my work, my livelihood, how I take care of myself? What's the effort I need to put forward and the quality of that effort? Yeah. How do I manage my attention across competing demands? Yeah. And what's my ability to concentrate on that whole thing in a way that's actually life-giving? Yeah. And, and and so that that's what fully human has been. Incredible. We've been 10 cohorts and a couple hundred people through this mm -hmm. deep inquiry during COVID where everyone's questioning oh, yeah. Lord, what's like, Oh my gosh, these yeah. lines are blurring now. Cause you've seen my kids running around a couple of times. I'm sure. it's <laughs> yeah. like, all this stuff that we, that we, has always been there, Yeah. but we didn't know it until COVID happened and we saw in everyone's living yeah. room. Yeah. Oh I gosh, so, bro. I so welcome that. Right. I mean, I, I really appreciated that. And, Initially, it was kind of being reported as, oh, no, look what's happened in this person's meeting. Or this person was on a broadcasting, you know, on the news and their children came in. It was all very awkward because it exposed them, you know, because not because their kids came in, but because they didn't know what to do, you know. And then and then it but then it became like, we're all human. This is just where we live and we're having to make do. And I was like, that allowed me to breathe. I was thinking, this is great because this is now our direction of travel and we can't go back from it. You know, I didn't think. And I, I think some of it's come back a little bit. So there's been some more kind of relayering of that kind of corporate, you know, like we have to be a certain way, et cetera. There's definitely a call back to people to come back to the office. And, you know, there's there's elements of it that are kind of not what they were during COVID. And of course, we have nothing much to thank COVID for either but you know that 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 the moments of authenticity that you were just allowed into you know and and i'm i it's all cool for people to hash their backgrounds out right and so you know like you can't see really what's going on behind but I, i'm i love not doing that you know like when when people ask me about my surroundings i'll tell them you know and sometimes that's a bit awkward and i'm all for that too so you know i i totally resonate with that um and i guess that's all on a path to them being comfortable with who you are comfortable with how people are seeing you uh recognizing that you have a place in the world all of those things right so i'm i am tantalized now by what the fully human program is for people like if you like describing it in a way that is so really like we have this number of sessions they're delivered in that way you know like in covid it had to be done um on video because that was the only choice that we had everyone had to you know mm -hmm. like just deal with it in the moment and change everything that they were doing to online is it still online is it partly online do you have the alternative of you know rocking up in person how's it working like you know what is the experience for me as a uh, you because i've got some of it which is like i'm gonna i'm gonna show up and you're gonna take me through a process of self-inquiry to get me to a place where i kind of realize what I'm for is what I'm feeling it is um, and how I can make an intentional impact in the world. Um, perhaps differently to how I have been up to now where I've maybe been like, maybe I've been like slightly sleepwalking through life. That's mm. kind of the vibe I've got so far. Yeah. Yes. So um, let me start filling in some color here. And if, and if yeah. I'm getting too detailed or something, you can say, Hey, move, move along. Right. So I'm sure. trying to find that, that right spot. So um the way we've, it, yes, it has been all virtual and there were cohort sizes from 10 to, I think our biggest one was 34, which was wow. our first one. We had 34 people show up and it was like, oh, oh. okay, I, I want it more intimate. So, so you, you know, we we started then deliberately capping the cohort sizes at like yeah. 15, yeah. right? So um, there, there are six two-hour sessions okay, over a 12-week period. So, you know, it's a three month, I'm going to be in a, I'm going to be in a three month inquiry with a group of people that may be like me or may be completely different than me, mm -hmm. but are in the same inquiry. And so where we call people's attention to, or what I invite as um, 
our enduring commitments. Mm -hmm. um, the, the author and poet David White calls them the three marriages. Mm -hmm. Marriage metaphorically, you know, enduring commitment more literally. Mm -hmm. It's like, so the first marriage is to myself. Mm -hmm. How's my commitment to my own self going? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Do I love myself? Do I honor myself? Do I respect myself? Am I in integrity with my sense of self and who mm -hmm. I am in the world? Mm -hmm. To the extent that I've even explored that. <laughs> yeah. That's commitment one. Yeah. Then commitment two is how do I bring that person into my home life? Mm -hmm. Whatever my you know biological home might be, or if I don't have parents alive or kids or partners, mm -hmm. like who, who's my chosen home or family, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. what's that? And then the third is my work. How do I take care of myself and my family and serve a as a, generative member of my community yeah so we we invite people to say just take a look bring your attention to your commitment to yourself your family and your work mm -hmm. how's it going mm -hmm. what needs your attention how are you checking for su success enough yeah. fulfillment how did you get those ways of yeah. checking for success so what's the one of the things we bring people to because because we spend so much time at work is what are all the beliefs and assumptions you were told from your mm. family and culture of origin about what work is, what work isn't, mm -hmm. what enough is, who you need to be, who mm -hmm. you can't be, mm -hmm. all those things. Have you even looked? And we, we label those, what are your cultural givens? Right. Can you name them? Do you know why you da 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 yeah. should or ought to? And yeah. this is where strength scope comes in super powerfully. Tell me about that. Well, so what we find in our work is that many people end up in a vocation based on the shoulds and ought tos that they got from their family and culture of origin. For sure. For sure. Yeah. I work with so many people that are having this like moment of self revelation. It's like, oh my gosh. I became a doctor because my mom's a doctor. I went to Stanford because my mom went to Stanford. I, like I've never chosen any of this for myself. Mm -hmm. I've been some AI agent exercising someone else's co source code, rule base. Right. To what extent do I have choice in where? Oh, so the question that I then ask people is, okay, at any given moment, what am I most under the influence of? What's mm -hmm. moving? Hmm. Is it moving me in a mm. <laughs> downward spiral? Is it moving mm -hmm. me in an upward spiral? Mm -hmm. Just because mm -hmm. we all move in both directions all the time. Yeah. So as you notice you're moving downward, oh, okay, w what is that? What's that energy that's moving me? Oh gosh, I'm feeling mom or dad shooting or auto, you know, you, I need to be doing this to be accepted, to belong. Mm. And there can be some betrayal, right? If there's... Mm. There's my authentic self and how do I adapt to be accepted mm -hmm. <laughs> and how much of that adaptation takes me away from authentic Kent yeah. such that I'm someone that I don't even know who they are yeah. just trying to please, you know, people so that I'm accepted all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So what strength scope has afforded me and many other people over, over the last decade is how can I make the distinction of what I'm naturally inspired and motivated and energized to relate to myself, the world, what's happening in others, mm. distinct from the people pleasing shoulds and ought tos mm. that I got from my parents, teachers, bosses, partners, et cetera. To love, love that. Me, to feel safe, to love belong. It. So it's so it's a conduit to like understanding what it is that genuinely motivates, inspires, and drives me, right? That's right. For me. And yes. then maybe I guess there may be a layer of some of that, maybe comes from you know some of those beliefs or whatever that you've inherited or picked up along the way but it's not really intended around that the questions don't relate to that you know like the questions are really about what what is it that energizes you what is it that motivates and drives you so that makes sense as a way of getting more to the authentic me on right. my own who i am particularly in a work environment right but we know it plays out outside yes. of work as well in your in your wider life Love it. That yeah. really makes so, sense. Yeah. yeah. So now let's look, let's click down a little further, right? Yeah. We, 
there's a, my authentic self and there's a group of people that I want to be accepted by family, mm -hmm. work colleagues, clients, partners, whatever the case might be. Mm -hmm. I can't just run around asserting, well, Paul, this is just my authentic self. Deal with me. Mm. <laughs> right. Or you can say, well, like, F you, Kent, <laughs> I'm being my authentic self. Deal with me. Right. That's yeah. that's so we're both. So so in collaboration and cooperation, mm -hmm. we're all mm -hmm. kind of adapting. How do we know ourselves as instruments mm -hmm. so that when I am adapting so that I can partner and relate with other people, I'm still myself, but I'm I, I'm nuanced and I'm yeah. dialed in such that I'm harmonizing with this other person, yeah. not creating a cacophony. Yeah. Yeah. Love that as well. Right. I mean, like we know that strength monsters can happen, right? Where you get two strengths that come together and you didn't realize that, but that that's then what starts to happen. Uh, Thanks, you, you can, yeah, right. I mean, I, I podcast on this a while back, but the strength monsters idea, taming the energy is really right. what it's about, right? And actually yes. the nuance is really important in that, figuring out what you have in common, figuring out what you almost have in antagonism and actually how that antagonism can be turned to complementarity. But you, but you need to have a language to do that. A hundred percent. And so let's link a couple other things here. This is why we named our company Paradox Edge a decade plus ago. Right. Being a human being is paradoxical. Yeah. And and rather than holding different perspectives as opposites, right, wrong, good, bad, mm -hmm. how are they complements of, of a whole? North doesn't make South bad or wrong the yeah. inhale doesn't <laughs> yeah make the exhale bad or wrong yeah right right um creativity doesn't make common sense bad yeah. or wrong yeah yeah right we need to get things done we need to be thoughtful we need to understand the emotional and relational landscapes as well yeah like as, as we bring all of these different threads or, or um, streams or energies or motives, mm -hmm. like, oh, gosh, thank God we have diversity. Now we have a chance mm -hmm. of seeing more of the whole and coming mm -hmm. up with a more whole solution that yeah. serves more stakeholders, which therefore creates more value. Yeah. And yeah. if our incentives are really aligned towards value creation, what, mm -hmm. what like, here we go. Yeah, exactly. What creates more value? Harmonizing teams of people at their best or fighting teams that don't trust each other trying to be more right? Yeah, that's interesting, right? So as a point of application, is that one of the areas where you've deployed the program, right? This where is exactly right. So this is where I wanted yeah. to go into with the drama triangle. Right. Right? So okay. this, this one-two punch, Yeah. the Carpman drama triangle, for anyone mm -hmm. listening, there are these three personas that most of us spend most of our time moving throughout as yeah. things are happening in our day. Yeah. Those personas are the hero. Mm -hmm. I'm like, uh oh, something's uncomfortable. So I just want to get myself and everybody out of this uncomfortable situation as quickly mm -hmm. as possible. I don't want, really want to address the underlying issue. Mm -hmm. I just want to like create temporary relief. Mm -hmm. and, and and by me creating temporary relief, people will like me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's there's that way. And those people, you know, there's the villain that's going around blaming everyone mm -hmm. for why things are the way they are. Paul, you messed it up. You didn't do this. You know, you don't care. You're not committed. Blah, blah, blah. You know, we all know that sales didn't do this. Mm -hmm. You know, engineering didn't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, all the blame game. Yeah. And then there's the victim persona, which all of these are, are really a, a collective. Mm -hmm. Everyone's competing to be the biggest, biggest victim. Mm. Oh, Paul, you don't understand how hard I have it, man. Mm. I'm an entrepreneur. I've got two little kids. Da, 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 da. Like, And we're just complaining and at the effect of everything. Yeah. So most people spend most of our time there, especially in organizations where we're doing transformational work, where we're mm. doing the hard things that have never been done before. Mm. We all have this innate need when things happen that we didn't want to have happen or expect mm -hmm. to have happen. Mm -hmm. Our biological response is to retract yeah. and engage in a way so that we feel safe, so that we're right, yeah. <laughs> so that we're in control, yeah. so that 
And if and if a whole team is retracting back towards, yeah. I need to be right so I don't get fired. Paul needs to be right so he doesn't get fired. So and so and now we're all just competing to not get fired. We're not actually solving the problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it becomes deeply psychologically unsafe, right? I mean, like deeply. nobody's safe. Yeah, nobody's safe. Yeah. So th th think. So we can maybe talk about the project that we cooperate on with AWS, right? Mm -hmm. They they called us and needed to find a way. Okay, we're in COVID. Mm -hmm. Everyone's working at home. Oh my gosh, demand for our services has grown exponentially because mm -hmm. the world's now operating virtually. Mm -hmm. So they're in hyper growth. Mm -hmm. And they're hiring tons of people and reorganizing and building teams together of people that have never met. Right. How do you create trust? How do you let people be themselves with their kids running around or their parents or this yeah. and that? And I'm trying to do a hard thing and I'm trying to understand, like, how do we create a language that allows us to navigate our inevitable different ways of orienting? Yeah things when it gets hard and when we're all under stress like we all were yeah yeah and so drama triangle gave us a lexicon gave us a, okay i can see myself and it's it's putting the onus on the individual hey you need to take responsibility for your own mm -hmm. wake mm -hmm. notice when you're going around just trying to fixy fix mm -hmm. to feel good and look good notice mm -hmm. when you're going around blaming other people mm -hmm. and not taking responsibility mm -hmm. Notice when you're going around whining and complaining about mm. what everyone is or isn't doing to make your life miserable. Mm. And how, when you notice that you're now you're at a choice point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but do I want to continue to be an agent mm -hmm. to perpetuate that way of being in my team? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or am I going to reorient myself in a way that allows me to express as my highest and best self? Yeah where I feel like me, mm. I feel like I can contribute and I have space to let other people do that too. Mm -hmm. I love that. I, and there's a, there's a resonance there with path of limitation, path of possibility. You've, you've That's it. referenced that it a it. couple of times, you know, so you're unlocking then and this sense of accountability that comes with that. I don't want to kind of, you know, um, but tell, tell me about what happens with that, the transition from the drama triangle to a more positive state. Like what is it? What does it flip to? For sure. So I, I can give an example. It's like when we first um, introduced this instrument, so we were working with the leadership team of all the Americas within mm -hmm. professional services. So we had global partnerships. We had technologists. We had business ops. We had you know uh, sales folks. We, we had all kinds of cross-functional yeah. groups all running different countries. How are we going to do this? Yeah. And so our first meeting, you know, we've got 12 of the senior leaders mm -hmm. of the Americas. And it's like, hey, hey we're going to do strength scope. Everyone bring their report. And, and this one woman, she's just like, Ugh, right? You just see it. She's like, oh, here we go again. Another assessment, another thing that we're going to do for a meeting. And then, right? So I'm introducing this. And, and who, who wants to start? So she just starts right off the bat. I, I don't I don't know why we're doing this. Da, 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 right. You, you've had this before, I'm sure. <laughs> Never. And I said, yeah. I said, oh, oh, Lori, I said, I, I can't thank you enough. And right away, she just relaxes, <laughs> like right off the bat. Yeah. I have her wheel up, too. Right. And I'm like, OK, she's got high courage, high yeah. self-confidence. Yeah. It, it, you know, it, it's like, OK. So I said, Lori, th thank you so much for voicing what every single person on this call was feeling inside and yeah. wondering what the F we're going to do with this thing. Yeah. She's like, yeah, good. Now she's all, now we're on the same team. And I say, and, and I, and I say, D are you the person who oftentimes comes to meetings and, and says the thing that everyone's thinking, like you have the courage to to yeah. really say what needs to be said, yeah, without being a jerk, but you just kind of say it. And it, and it re she's like, yeah, I, I go like you just did, like you just did, yeah. She's like, yeah. I said, can you see? I said, can you pull your wheel up for me real quick? She's like, yeah. I said, do you mind if we show it to everyone on the sc screen? 
She's like, no, no. And I said, so just like, we've never done this before. Just look here. Like what, as you look at your mm -hmm. significance, like what, what just happened for you energetically as you mm. came in like hot. Hi, Jackson. <laughs> this is my son. Hi. Hi, Jackson. How are you? Good. Good. Thank you, Bubby. And she says, oh, yeah, I see my, my self-confidence and courage here. She's like, I, I do. I do this all the time. And sometimes I get, you know, pushback because I do it inappropriately. And, you know, sometimes it works. I'm like, mm. you're doing awesome. Yeah. So that that's how we just use that tool. I love it. For, I love it. I've done it too, about, right? Like exactly like that, where you you know when you use the tool, you can feel it when it's coming at you from somebody. And, you know, you kind of you just hear it in the language they use, the approach they're taking, you feel the energy coming and you, you can't be absolutely sure it's gotta be a courage strength, but you're right, it could be self-confidence, it could be results focus, it could be whatever it is that's making it happen. It's like, let's explore that. Let's go there and find out what it is that's driving you and whether that happens in other places and what that means, you know, for you in terms of you at your best. And sometimes when, you know, you kind of get on the wrong side of that uh that energy you know and it leads to yeah. unintended consequences right i mean it's just so powerful for that and it's and and safe right i mean it, just that description that you just gave you know yeah you checked in with her you made sure she was okay to share and all of those things but the thing with strength scope is it because it's from that positive psychology start point it never feels like a threat right or or very rarely you know i think there has to be a level of psychological safety in the room with the group and you, and you have to check in and, and all of that stuff. Um, but it's very rare that it feels like it's, it's a, a negative coming towards you. It's, it's like, it's much more appreciative than that because it comes from that positive psychology position tradition. Absolutely. And so now that we, we get exam, right? Like right off the bat, we get a practical yeah. example, something that she did for herself. And then I was like, okay, do you see how you did that for yourself? Yeah. You see how you came in and you were blaming Dave for giving us this other, you know, stupid thing that we got to do. Yeah. You know, you were like attacking me a little bit. Like, how, you know, how's it like, why do I have to do this thing? I'm busy. Like, this is like you were in the, yeah. she's like, yeah, yeah, great. So, so here's the drama triangle. Not now, anytime you notice you're in one of these, you know, uh, pull your wheel out. Yeah. How, how can you get a view of yourself? Mm -hmm what's happening that has you go, oh, that, that's my on-ramp. Yeah. That gets me from path of limitations to path of possibilities. That gets yeah. me from drama to presence. Yeah. Because now I'm cre I'm creating. And, and so I'm moving from it has to be right or I'm going to get fired or, or look bad or whatever mm -hmm. that, that puts all that drama stuff into play mm -hmm. towards, oh, okay, there's a, there's a set of circumstances or conditions. I have mm -hmm. choice. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be some consequence of that choice. And then we're going to see there's some circumstances. Yeah. And then I'm going to make another choice. <laughs> yeah. And then there's going to be some consequences. And so in that moment of choice, this is where we're bringing people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the quality of your attention? What's the quality of your awareness in your ability to choose mm -hmm. how you are going to respond mm -hmm. when we're doing really hard things and the world's spinning a million miles mm -hmm. an hour? How do I get myself as instrument? How do I tune myself mm -hmm. into myself so I can take a well-organized, dialed-in person yeah. into an unknowable, unshaped, and unformed future? Yeah. And then it's going to go how it's going to go. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Um, start point with that program, right? And the context that you gave around AWS and how they were facing into this like incredibly turbulent, challenging moment of scale right where everything is suddenly you know doubled down in terms of pressure and stress on everybody and and how you know you've got this real melting pot of uncertainty with like people coming together who don't know each other and all of that risk and then you just kind of give this clarity and this i say this quite a lot on the podcast and i kind of I probably if i listen back to the 230 episodes that i've recorded up to this point I'd, I'd say it too many times, but you know, you can be sure of one thing, right? When everything around you is, is uncertain, you're going to be there, right? And you bring the same strengths, 
right? You can use them in different combinations, but they are fundamentally who you are. They bring you choice. They allow you to uh, be intentional as to what shows up, who shows up, which strengths, what energy you want to bring to that situation. And, you know, if you did, if you get a poor outcome, you can go again. You got the learning as well, right? There's There's so much there that's just useful as this kind of common language idea that you can get that dialogue going. You can you can take the heat out of it in terms of that antagonistic feeling or the fear factor or anxiety that comes. And, and you can just go to, yeah, but that was this. That was what was happening for you right then. You know, like if you want to do it again, you could probably do it differently. Yeah, you've said that yourself, but actually, you know, so it's, um, yeah, it's really powerful in those moments of pressure, I think. And so it's great you shared that example because it sounds like that was significant pressure at that point in time. So to deploy the program and strengths and strength scope into that environment, you know, I think it just demonstrates the value right there. So thank you. Yeah, of, of course. And, and then we can weave that, the strengths lexicon, the drama triangle lexicon, we, we can weave that into the way their, their own lexicon, the way they use their leadership principles. Right. Right. And, and as AWS, you know, has these leadership principles, they, they're intentionally set up as polarities, like, yeah. like a strengths wheel is right. It's like, oh, okay. Like, we're right a lot because we're really curious and we're seeking yeah. to disprove our beliefs and assumptions. We're not coming in to assert our righteousness. Yeah. And, and we do that by saying, Hey, I, I'm bringing to this conversation, my strategic mindedness and my creativity mm -hmm. and collaboration lens. Uh, who, who's playing critical thinking, who's playing details, who's playing customer, mm -hmm. right? right? Like, let, let's all tune in to how we want to play this conversation to make sure that everyone's got their instrument in tune yeah. so, so that you can play your part. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. we're co-creating together towards the future that we all want to participate in yeah. as our highest and best self. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a really powerful antidote to working longer and harder through accelerating VUCA. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. And it, it gives you a different perspective, right? You can go to a person, you can go to a couple of colleagues, you can figure out how you can collaborate and do it together rather than thinking you've got to do it on your own. And you just got to, as you say, do it faster, harder, stronger, you know, like just work longer because that's the only solution. Is it though? Or is there a different, smarter, more energizing way of us collaborating? You know, like, yeah. It, yeah. And that's where this idea of flow comes into. And we've talked about this. I remember when, when we were doing the strengths um, forum back in 20, when was that? 2017 or 2018 yeah. when I came over and spoke. And it's like, when really hard things are happening, how do we bring what I'm good at from a competency perspective, bring what I love from an energetic perspective mm -hmm. and get oriented towards that prep? Like those are the perfect ingredients to access flow states. Yeah. And, yeah. and in the research we see, uh, there was a McKinsey study that that um, looked at senior executives and asked how much more productive they were when they're in flow mm. versus their normal, mm -hmm. you know, grinding through it mm -hmm. five times. Yeah, not a surprise. Not a surprise. Great study. So by great. The way. Now, strength scope is a recipe, right? Here you have reliable, repeatable, predictable ingredients. That yeah. when things get hard and you notice you're railing against it in some mm. drama dynamic, you can actually retune yourself through strength scope to to arrive at some flow state. Mm. Yeah, that's the work. That's the slow down to go fast move that we worked all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, just like you, you want to play a song, but your guitar is not in tune. It's not. It's not going to mm. flow. Mm. Yeah, and practically with that, right? To be so, list before you pick up your to do list. Yeah, exactly. And um, there's something there as well about. Oh, sorry. The, yeah, I just looked at time. Gosh. Yeah, yeah. We we probably should. Um, there's so much more we can talk about, right? Um, <laughs> and you know, I mean, honestly, we could just keep going. But I also don't want to like eat too much into your day. And Jackson needs you, man. I, I'm cool for it. Like he's, he'll come back if he needs, but I just wanted to, I just, I was yeah, like, yeah. Oh, God, I mean, we, you wanted to land it 10 minutes ago. We, we, yeah. We probably do need to kind of call it at some point fairly soon. It's true. Um, but there was something about the, the musical analogy I just want to pick up on. Right. And like the, the tuning thing and how 
difficult it is, and this is kind of making sense, I think, with this analogy, how difficult it is to dial down or because if you try and dial down a strength, right, to stay in flow or get to flow, there's an inevitability about actually what happens. It can be quite binary and you might end up inadvertently switching it off, which is not your intention. So to stay in flow, right, even if you've kind of tipped into overdrive, the idea that we now talk about is that you bring in a complementary strength, either your own or someone else's, right, to keep you in flow, to keep you in that in that autonomically aroused state, actually, which is exactly where you want to be in order to maintain a flow state. Um, mm. You don't try and dial it back. Uh, I mean, that may be a byproduct of bringing in another strength to help you. But, you know, you, it, it's actually really hard just to have one string on your guitar. You know, you have a number and that's the point, right? Is that you aren't going to make much of a tune if you just go with the one thing. So actually bring in other strengths, others, other strengths too. And that can help you stay in tune and stay in flow. So thank you for that. You just brought me that like really clearly with the musical analogy like that. Mm. Yeah. Got it. Well, music's a beautiful way. Music's not political. It's not a sports metaphor. It doesn't exclude like most people have a pretty healthy relationship with music. Point. I don't, I don't meet yeah. too many. And they understand different sounds, textures, tones, mm. pace, rhythm, like all those things. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, is there anything like I want to, there is more we can talk about. Yeah. I think you just have to come back or uh, like we have to kind of connect in some other way, right? Many yeah. other ways, you know, like many other times in the future. Um, but like is there anything else you wanted to share? Is there, I mean, other than if people want to get in touch with you, cause that's absolutely essential that, you know, you, you kind of, and, and I think it's essential for everybody listening that they do get in touch with you. That's going to be a lot of people who come in right at you. But if they do want to, what are the best ways of, of doing that? Uh, the website is fullyhuman.us. Perfect. Um, is that, oh, that's clever. Because is that .us actually? But It's, it's not .us, but I hold it as us because we're all just fully human. That's amazing. And, and yeah. so so that's the website. It, and um, email is kent at fullyhuman.us. Um LinkedIn, Kent Frazier, those those are all ways that people can connect with me. Fantastic. I'm going to ask you like a question that flows from the first one, um, which I just love to ask. Right, If you met younger you, what one piece of advice would you give you now to younger you that would really help younger you move through life towards the place that you are now, but with more ease maybe? Great question. Um, tr trust myself. Mm. Yeah. Profound. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Ken, it's been incredible. Um, I really appreciate you. I appreciate you taking the time and being so open and sharing the 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 program right and your experiences with it um I, I just you've just really i want to be like on it you know like the way you've described it and what you've talked about um it just i it's kind of come straight through to me and i just i really connect with it so i massively appreciate you taking us through that um you know i hope you get some some people getting in touch with you i think i think everyone should like i say you know like <laughs> just have a conversation with you so um ken i'm gonna i'm i'm gonna say like that's it for now um thank you so much and uh we'll put show notes out um there, there are going to be there's a number of different people you referenced so places that people can go to to look and read more about um i think there's a couple of video links as well so we'll put all of that in the show notes that's going to be over on the strength scope website on the resources section um just search on your name and people can find it if they want to know more so with that i will say thank you very much ken and um see you soon thank you paul happy holidays <laughs> thank you